Some scenes may not be appropriate for younger audiences. Parental discretion is advised. Okay, welcome back to another video. So, the Holy Spirit has really been putting it on my to-do list to give my testimony. I've also had other people confirm that, saying, give your testimony, give your testimony. Because when it comes to people who have came to Jesus, I am definitely the most unlikely person. I have been through a lot. I have seen a lot. And when you think of Christianity or when you think of Jesus Christ, you think of perfect image clean but my testimony my life is very rusty but 1 Corinthians 127 says but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong so God I don't know if you're calling me weak but by myself yes I admit that I am so I'm just gonna start out from my birth so I was born of course we were all born and then I was born again but I was born pretty sure I was literally born under a cross it was like a light up cross my dad left me before i was even born when i was born and then i had another stepdad he was a good person you know i developed quite a bond and then there was a divorce it was very strange because i'm like this person is my father and then there was just a divorce and i'm like what now and then when that divorce happened my grandma also passed away these are two people that i was very close to because my mom was a single mother my grandma was always home so we built a bond. I always just drowned myself in other things. I was never really home. When it came to BMXing, I could always be outside of the house. I would just BMX continually. And I got really good because I would just be obsessive. Shortly after that, my mother got into another relationship. So I had another stepdad. When it came to like earthly fathers, I, I couldn't put my trust into them. I couldn't get close. I just didn't trust. So like the house was extremely awkward because this this person was trying to be my father and my mother was trying to force it and it was just extremely awkward inside of the home for years like I would go home and nothing would be said I was a teenager and I had all of this baggage all of this confusion and I had nowhere to bring it so I was doing YouTube videos I was just looking for community or looking for a family online when I was making these videos I was very prideful arrogant all of these different things I became obsessed with YouTube probably because I was looking for validation I was looking for love high school rolls around and I was still doing videos and when high school rolled around there was a lot of things that took place in high school so I was very vain I was a good-looking person people would be like you're good-looking but I was very vain and prideful in high school and then I started working out and I took weight gainer which had like a whole bunch of milk and my face just blew up with acne and i literally didn't go to high school for a full year and i'm like there's no way i am ever going in the public because i was vain i'm like there's no way i went to this lady and she like popped them all which led to scarring so it was even worse i was definitely consumed in all of the worldly things that are destructive because i was misguided there was nobody there to discipline me to show me the right way it was just me as a young man inside of the world so i listen to a lot of people online and as a man the world teaches you you need to be rich you need to have status andrew tate are these people who give these worldly doctrines that sound right there's a way that sounds right to man but in the end it leads to death and i was listening to these men you gotta manifest your destiny all of the enemies counterfeits manifestation meditations and it was a counterfeit because i didn't know god i was seeking truth and i was trying to find fulfillment and i could never find it it was always something that was partial everything under the sun i've tried it all and jesus says i am the way i am the truth i am the life and the moment i found jesus that's when i truly found fulfillment that's when i truly found the truth that thing that never goes away that you know like this is it in high school there was a lot of trauma because i was unsaved and i guess the enemy was taking advantage of that you know i was getting into fights all the time right like riot 
fights, just ridiculous stuff. And it was just getting bad, you know? It just felt like, you know, one fight after another and wasting my years, wasting my life. But yeah, like, there was just a lot of dark things and a lot of times that God really was with me even when I didn't know it. So still in high school, I remember one time I was at a party and I just felt something in my spirit. This was when I started to catch on, like, what am I doing? I went to this party and I wasn't drinking at all. I had water on my cup and the people I was with at the time were like, what are you doing? Like, come back in and i'm like i'm leaving this place like this is the last time and i remember walking to sev and then my friends came it was a street fight somebody got into an altercation and then the person who i was beside which was my best friend at the time this dude was fighting my other friend and he was beating my friend up the other friend that was with me he's like what are you doing go and help him and then i felt inside of my spirit because i was always fighting at the time so i was quick to jump into fights and settle things but i heard in the spirit no stay away and this was before before I was saved. So I feel like it was definitely God. So I stayed back and my other friend beside me ran ahead to defend my friend and I just stayed out of it because I heard that voice. And this person who they were fighting ended up pulling out a knife and stabbing one of my best friends. And I remember ripping off my shirt and wrapping it around him while he was bleeding out and he was like white as snow, white as a ghost and he was sweating. And I was just holding him and wrapping this bandage around him waiting 48 hours to see if my friend my best friend, the closest friend I had at the time, was gonna make it, was gonna be alive. This is when I learned forgiveness. I had a court case where I had to see the guy who did it, and I had to talk about the situation. I remember being in the shower just saying, I forgive him, I forgive him, I forgive him, and just hours upon hours upon hours, and this is where I truly learned forgiveness for the first time. Very, very very dark honestly so after that i went to work in the pipeline which was 12 hours a day six days a week and i only got sunday off and i was making a lot of money but felt like there was something more in life and i just felt so double-minded and just lost and just what am i doing here i just felt alienated i just felt so different and it was so uncomfortable and i worked there for a year and two months there was just something inside of me that was just screaming you got this purpose you got this thing so it was definitely god like nudging at me me, but it was so annoying and I felt so conflicted and I was just battling myself because I felt like there was more but I never knew what it was and it actually drove me crazy I was chasing the wind trying to figure out what this was at this job I made a whole bunch of money and I had a beautiful new home I had a Hummer H2 that I dumped like I don't even know like 10 grand or something crazy I, I just put a whole bunch of money into this vehicle and I really just was focused on making money really just focused on work i really had no life like i don't find fulfillment in this there's more and i just felt that so deeply in my spirit after this i came back home and i had all of this money but still this nagging voice of there's more and this was like actually torture knowing that there's something out there knowing that i'm missing out on something but never able to put my finger on it it actually tortured me my whole life and it was definitely god but i could never find that it i could never find that what and it was driving me crazy so i remember actually being in this place all of this money just got to a point where i really wanted to just off myself i was just tired of living again and i just had an extreme low and i had this beautiful view had a Hummer H2 all blacked out, all specked out. This thing was like a military vehicle. And I just had very dark thoughts. Obviously, it was demonic spirits. I was just finished. I was like, man, I need to crash. I don't know why, but I'm like, I need to crash this vehicle into a semi. I want to crash this vehicle. And I was fantasizing of actually driving into a semi. Very strange, but I didn't actually want to do it because I was too cowardly to actually pull the trigger and do it. So, obviously, I was just fantasizing, but I didn't do it. You you meditate on something so long and then life and death is in the power of the tongue and those that level will eat the fruit thereof so I, it just got to a point where i was thinking like that so much and i was driving like 110 115 down this highway in this hummer the sunroof was open i had no seatbelt, and i was on my phone the steering wheel it would pull to the right so i was just on my phone for a split second and it pulled right into the ditch and then i tried to correct it keep in mind on both sides there is a deep deep lake if it flipped in there 
there, I would have drowned. There was a highway, grass cutoffs, and a deep lake on both sides. The road was very narrow. I was driving straight and I turned and then my tire went over the side of the highway into the grass to slide down and I corrected to go to the other side while doing 110 and I went to the other side very quickly and before I went into the lake I just jolted and cut and then obviously my tires gripped the highway sideways from over correcting and it tumbled and it rolled multiple times and I had no seatbelt the sunroof was open when I was flipping I could see my head and I could see my hands like about to scrape the concrete but I just crawled up under the vehicle and I got up and I had just a cut in my head that was bleeding and my back was aching and I was limping to this woman's vehicle. I remember just getting into the ambulance and I was asking my mother who was following, can you get me some vape juice? Because I was vaping at the time. I had a severe addiction to vaping all throughout high school, but I felt very calm and just safe and secure, which is just so weird to say. I knew everything was going to be okay. I just trust God. I'm like, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be okay. And after that, you know, my back was sore. It was aching. Shortly after that, I started going to the gym, <laughs> which is not something I should have done. Now, the doctors were like, don't be squatting. Don't be deadlifting. But I was doing that. I was doing the opposite. I'm like, I'm not even going to listen to you guys. And I got the strongest I ever got in my life inside of the gym. I was back to working, but I just had this purpose. You know, I just couldn't do my job anymore because my spirit, God, I don't know, was just like so loud and so annoying. And I'm just like, man, I can't do this anymore. I stopped listening to my boss as much just because I felt like I was shifting into something new. And I knew this wasn't for me. And I felt like there was just something else. But God was always there. Even when I was working, oh, even growing up, like God was always knocking at the door. When I was growing up, my sister and her husband, they were Christian. I guess I was spiritual. Whatever that means, I don't even know what that means. I was looking for actual truth, power, and it just seemed religious. It seemed clean. I just didn't see how I could fit into that. Going to these Christian camps when I was younger, I would go there for girls. I would go there just to, you know, for the snacks. They always had like these snack bars or to go tubing. Like I wasn't there for God. I just didn't feel like I fit the mold. And obviously like all the distractions of the world, like there was things that the enemy made appear much cooler. I listened to the worship songs and felt like a positive, jolly feeling, but I didn't see God in it. But God was always nudging. Even at work, I would have people ministering to me. When I would drive hours to the work site sometimes, or it'd be like 45 minutes, I would be in the truck with somebody I worked with. And this person who I worked with on the pipeline, we were doing engineering. He's like, you know, when I get out of here, I'm going to be a pastor. I'm going to be ministering. I'm going to be doing the work of the Lord. And I'm like, yeah, all right, cool, man. And he would always listen to Joel Osteen or T.D. Jakes on the radio before we went to work. And he's like, it just fires me up. It gives me motivation in the morning. It really just gives me a spark. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, man. And I was reading positive vibrations or stuff like that, trying to stay positive at work. And I thought that was the truth. I'm just like, okay, I'm going to be loving. I'm going to be positive. You know, I'm going to be pure. And that's what I was in because I didn't know the truth. I was into like positive. Positive vibrate and all of that universal junk counterfeit nonsense. I was into that because I didn't find God yet and I guess that was the closest thing. But people who are like that, who are adamant on finding the truth, usually come to salvation and usually come to God because they try everything and they realize that nothing besides Jesus and the finished work of the cross is the only thing that actually is the truth, actually works. So yeah, he was listening to T.D. Jakes, all of these different things. He would be in his truck and I would be working and he would just pull up scriptures and we would just be by the truck and talk about it but still like I didn't see God in it I'm like cool you know that sounds awesome amazing you know I was just focused on like what is this calling inside like what am I supposed to be doing like this voice is so annoying I wasn't even thinking about God so yeah then I went to Vancouver because I'm like okay well I'm doing videos so I want to go to the big city because big city means big opportunity big city you know nobody knows me so I could do tomfoolery I could do my videos there this is where I found God and it was also one of the worst times in my life imaginable 
this is what it is right now just me my bag i'm not gonna lie so i left my job because i felt the holy spirit saying hey go to the city so i went to the city and i was making videos in vancouver and i was just being extremely rude extremely rebellious making these pranks getting arrested going to the border getting arrested like doing these crazy things seriously Are you from the city? we're from the european government there is not a european government yeah. Get the we just I've heard this woman tell you five times to stop spraying. He takes his job very seriously. I don't seriously. give a shit about our property very seriously. I know. Get off the this guy's been trying to like move up the corporate ladder since he started. Shut up. Disrespecting people because you know pranks on YouTube where you're just an absolute clown, an absolute fool. That was what was huge online. So I'm like, I'm just gonna do this. Hey guys, come back. And I had a whole bunch of money in my bank account, spent it all, and I was staying at this person's house. And this person, they had scriptures kind of on the walls, like in God we trust. It was like things that were kind of of God, and I was praying to God because I took such a huge leap of faith alone by myself and I had nobody so I'm like I'm gonna pray to God because you know it's just me and God taking such a big leap of faith is where I found God because I literally had nothing to bank on because I went to the city by myself with no one else and only just money and only just a dream it actually just completely failed and blew up in my face so I was in the city for quite a while filming these videos with this person and I was in a very desperate place I was in the city all alone Alone. I knew one person I was staying at his place and all I had was a vehicle all I had was this money and it was actually terrible I remember setting down my bag and somebody stole all that camera equipment So I lost my camera equipment and then when I was staying at this friend's place His dad was like just so angry and adamant about kicking me out So I'm like all right So I started sleeping in my vehicle and then my vehicle broke down everything broke down I ran out of money ran out of a place to stay I was staying in my vehicle the tire ripped off and I was staying in this neighborhood I was sleeping in the back and I had this black sheet and I was staying in the back for so long People in the neighborhood would see me sleeping in the back car And then I got a bike and I would like, you know set it by my car My bike got stolen literally everything got stripped everything got stolen It says that the devil is only there to steal kill and destroy and I was just being a clown I was being a fool which gave complete just an open door to the end enemy which he did everything to destroy everything i was just broken there was times where i would just be like wandering in fields and just sleeping in the woods or just like walking in the woods and like what am i doing and people would be calling me like hey you're good and my pride i had so much pride i'm like yeah of course i've got this under control while you know i'm literally in the woods broken and shattered like crying out to god in despair and you know in my lowest moment is where i met the highest name that's usually the story i was broken broken i was shattered i was fed up like it got to the point where i you know everything of mine got stolen i was doing these videos the videos were being corrupted I, my car got destroyed it got stranded my camera equipment got stolen in my mind i'm like i'm just gonna keep on going you know if there's a light if there's a will there's a way everything of mine got stolen and i had two dollars inside of my wallet and i was leaning on this asian store because they had bread for like 50 cents and it was like a whole bunch of bread man it got really low when I was filming these videos. I remember one time I got a tarp from Walmart because I had no place to stay, right? I got kicked out of this person's house and I was either staying at this girl's house and I got kicked out of that place as well. So I had nothing. So all I had was a tarp and I literally slept outside under this tarp and my clothes were just drenched. My clothes were just wet. And I woke up in the morning and some like homeless dude like opened it up and he had crack inside of his pipe, like legitimate crack. And he said, hey, do you want some damn? Down, which I don't even know what that is. It's probably meth. It's probably crack and I'm like no Absolutely not and I was just I was just crying out to God. I'm like this is the lowest of the low like my gosh God like and I was just praying for a place to stay praying for a place to sleep So then I was staying at this girl's place and this girl like ended up cheating like it, literally everything was just breaking me down utterly destroying me and i'm like i'm done that's where i found god and that's what actually got rid of that voice what is my calling what is my purpose what is this that thing that was just bugging me at work it was god calling me and i had to find god but i just had so much pride so much arrogance so much barriers in the way and i went to vancouver and just got obliterated got broken down went to the lowest of the 
low so I can meet the highest of the high. And that's where I met God. And really, it's just been a sanctification process. God really broke off every single desire because the Lord, he plants a seed inside of your spirit that grows and grows. And even when I was in the city, even when I was in the city the whole time, I was being evangelized too. I would be walking down the streets when I had nowhere to stay and there would be like evangelists with signs of repentance. Or I would be down at the beach and some old man, he's like, I've just been ministering for hours and hours and hours and walking for miles and miles and miles on this beach. Do you want to hear about God, all of this? And he had like an old King James Bible like ministering to me while I was like shooting a, a very foolish, dumb video. I was like, can I have this Bible? He's like, no, it's mine. And he was, you know, sweating in a plaid shirt. But there was many times where I was being ministered to. I would like walk through these very dark streets. I would always have to walk through Hastings streets, which is the lowest of the low. And there would be a lot of evangelists on that street, a lot of people ministering on that street because they're trying to save the lost. So I'd always see pamphlets of God or I'd see crosses or all of these things. And it would just always be on my path. And I was so hopeless. I was in so much despair that I would pick them all up and I would read them. But I never understood what any of it meant, like salvation, all of these Christianity words. I didn't understand them because it says that Satan has blinded the mind of unbelievers. And he blinded my mind. There was a veil I couldn't see. I really couldn't see and I really couldn't understand. But I kept all of these pamphlets and people were ministering to me. And it just got to the point where I was just broken. I was destroyed and I cried out to God. And I feel like when I cried out to God, that started my sanctification journey. That started my process of being refined, being pruned, and just being worked on. Him taking the desires. All of the things that don't glorify him. It says that Jesus has pulled us from the kingdom of darkness. It was definitely in the kingdom of darkness and he has pulled me from that and now it's just growing in the Lord ever since that day it's just been growing in the Lord gradually it says that there's one who plants a seed and there's one who waters it and then God does the acceleration so when I was in Vancouver honestly my whole life there was people planting seeds all the time I had a veil I had spiritual blindness I couldn't see I was lost in the world lost in the things of the world lost in counterfeits and chasing things under the sun but people were always planting seeds continually inside of my life and then in Vancouver it was seeds and then you know people were just watering it. it was just very supernatural things were happening spontaneously like I was talking to these Mormons they were ministering to me and I was just praying to God I'm like God I really need a Bible like please just give me a Bible something I can read the next day I find a Bible in the back alley which was like a gray watchtower Bible, but I still like read that for a long time and I knew it was false, but I still was so connected in the spirit. I had the Holy Spirit and I banked on that for truth. That's why I never fell into Mormonism. They were always knocking on my door and we'd have conversations and they would try to get me baptized in their church. We would just talk about the things of God. And then after that, there was other ministers from Christian churches and it was just like that. Walking with Christ, it definitely is not easy. There's a lot of battles. There's a lot of over coming but none of it is in vain before christ my suffering my pain my trauma everything i went through was in vain there was no glory at the end of the story with christ my suffering my pain my trauma things i go through god always flips it around beautifully where there's actually glory where there's actually victory on the other side and it's not easy because when you're with the lord you start confronting all of the problems that before you ran away from when you turn to christ it's like there's just so many fires there's so many battles. There's this, there's that. Your environment has to change. Your family has to change. You have to change. You have to grow. You have to be pruned. There's just a lot of spiritual transformation, a lot of spiritual growth, and a lot of overcoming and a lot of battles, but it's so worth it. Even now where I'm at, still sometimes the hand of God is very heavy and I am destroyed and I am broken, but it's not because of the enemy. I'm not being destroyed by the enemy. I'm being crushed by God so I can produce oil. When we are suffering, when we are squeezed, when you squeeze a lemon, you get juice. When you crush grapes, you get wine. When you do things God's way and when God crushes you, but you produce something beautiful. But when it's just the enemy crushing you, you lose everything and it's all in vain and it's all useless. So yeah, I choose God over the worldly way a billion times over. And this life with Christ is just so much better than anything else. The world has no truth in it. The world has no fulfillment 
fulfillment in it. It's just chasing after the sun and just doing things God's way, being righteous, being a slave to righteousness just brings so much more fulfillment, brings so much more life, brings so much more enjoyment. And I'm not saying this walk is easy. Like I said, it could be much more difficult, but it's because God is using your story. I have done it all and God has seriously delivered me from it all. But I'm so glad that the Lord finally got to me. I was stiff necked. God chases the rebels down. It's so beautiful to find the truth to actually stand on that firm foundation and just grow. Like Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. And he can transform and change any man, any person. People who have tried everything, people who've tried to find fulfillment in everything, they have such a great relationship with God because they've tried everything in the world. They've tried to look for truth in absolutely everything. They try to find fulfillment in absolutely everything. And then they come to Jesus and they realize that it's only Jesus that can give that. But if I was just grown in a Christian home and everything was, you know, sunshine and flowers, that would be amazing. But I wouldn't know that God is truly the only way, the only truth, the only life. Like, I wouldn't know that. But now I do know that because I've tried everything under the sun and I wish I didn't. You know, I wish I had somebody there. Don't do that. God's the only way. But now I can be that for my sons or daughters and I could use my testimony. Don't do that. Look, I've done that and it leads nowhere. It's just chasing after the wind. So I feel like my testimony, my story could save a lot of people from wasting years, wasting time. And it can also be a learning lesson for everybody, including myself. So yeah, this is my testimony. But yeah, I'm just in a process of being refined, pruned, and day by day. Ain't perfect, but who is? If your glory wants to come in, let it fall. We want it all. Lord, your fire is consumed.